My brothers and sisters in Christ, in today's gospel, we hear a passage that sounds very familiar to something we just heard a couple of days ago. In fact, this past Sunday, we heard from the 25th chapter of Matthew's gospel, the parable of the talents, servants given great sums by their master, and when he returns, a settling of accounts to see what they did with them. In a similar way, in today's gospel from the 19th chapter of Luke, we hear about uh, a master going on a journey who gives his servants gold coins. And in one sense, it's very similar. When he returns, he asks for an accounting of what they did with those coins. And yet, there is also a distinct difference. The, the story of the coins and what the servants did with it is embedded within a greater story that had historical context for the listeners. Of course, Jesus is saying this right before he enters Jerusalem in Luke's gospel. Now, in those current days, the son of King Herod the Great, who is not to be confused with the Herod that we hear uh, in the nativity stories, Herod the Great was the local king that when he died, his sons divided up uh, his kingdom. And in a sense, King Herod that we hear of as the son, uh, the, uh, in a sense, a lesser man than his father. But Archelaus, another son of Herod, had to go to Rome. The, the story of a man going on a journey to claim his kingship, Archelaus had to journey to Rome to get receive his crown. And the local people sent a delegation begging Caesar not to grant him the crown. In fact, he was very cruel, and he had put to death a great number of the Jewish people already. In the same way, Archelaus, when he eventually did receive his crown, came back and exacted vengeance upon the locals, just as we hear in the surrounding parable. Now, the great irony in this story is that, of course, Jesus is making a reference to himself in this parable, and yet, Jesus and Archelaus couldn't be two different figures. But, in the same way, as if the people hearing this parable heard it in terms of a very particular situation with King Archelaus, then it would make all the more sense the king that they fight against, that they ultimately reject, what Jesus, in fact, was going to Jerusalem to be rejected as the king. However, for today's purposes, let's focus on the greater thing, this repeat theme of the gold coins or the gold talents in Matthew's gospel. In this one, each servant is given the same amount. They are each given a gold coin and they produce different amounts. At the end of the day, this is a story of stewardship. It's a story of stewardship, not just in a sense of our charitable contributions with our wallets, but the fact that the Lord has entrusted us with everything. First of all, our very gift of life itself is a gift. The grace by which we're saved, the grace of our baptism, is pure, undeserved gift. Everything that we have and everything that we are is gift. It has been given to us, and the Master ultimately asks for an accounting of what we've done with it. Ultimately, nothing we are or have belongs to us for our own selfish purposes. We're asked to put it to work on behalf of our Master. And so, this may yield different returns for different servants. And in fact, we're not all the same. The gifts that we've each been given isn't the same. Not all of us will be a towering St. Francis of Assisi type person. But what the Lord does ask is a faithfulness and a return on what we've been given. In a sense, what is the ROI for what we've been given? St. Therese of Lisieux makes a wonderful analogy of this when she describes the kingdom of God as a beautiful garden. She says that some are given the grace to be these beautiful lilies or roses, other are given the grace just to be the grass, the undergrowth. And the fact of the matter is this isn't because anyone's better than anyone else, but for God's purposes, he gives different gifts, different types of grace to different people for the building up of his kingdom. Ultimately, it's not about us at all. It's about the kingdom of God. Each of us is given in order to share with others. God takes care of us. Our own provision is made, but what we are given is to be shared with others. Therefore, when we talk of stewardship, we don't just talk in a sense of being charitable in our giving. It's do we live a life of gratitude? Do we live a life as if everything we have demands of us a return, and not just a return to God, 
but a return to one another. In a sense, the servant who buries his coin in a handkerchief is the person who selfishly dishoards that which they've been given. And again, this isn't just about money. This is their gifts, this is their time, they just hoard it, whether out of fear, as the servant pretends, or whether out of a laziness or a selfishness, but it's hoarded and it yields nothing. The coin yields nothing, the ROI is zero. And yet, to those who work with what the Lord has been given, more and more is entrusted to bear abundant fruit. We are called to each of us make a return to God, to make an accounting. There will be an accounting. What have we done with what God has given us? And this is at the heart of stewardship. May we truly be good stewards of God's great gifts for us and in us. May God bless you all.